Good morning from Victoria, Canada. My name is Steven. And I'm Jaylen. And we just got into port. It is 5 p.m. And that's right. This is a weird port. If you're going on an Alaska cruise, you might have this weird thing where you arrive midday or late afternoon. And that is going to be a different experience. Now, if you arrive normally in the morning, who cares? It doesn't matter. Just a regular day in port. But this one, what do you even do at five o'clock? I mean, when are you supposed to have dinner? Are you gonna be at port? Are you gonna be on the ship? What is going on here? And then also you have to pack. Tomorrow's the last day. Victoria always ends off the cruise. So if we leave later at 9.30, that's like no nighttime. So this is gonna be weird. We're gonna answer all those questions in this video. Come along with us as we figure out how this nighttime experience is gonna be in Victoria and on board. So when you arrive in port, it's late, so that means everybody's already up, I assume. I mean, that's just one thing to assume. I'm usually up late, so I usually miss arrivals in the morning, but it's in the afternoon, so everyone's up, everyone's running around. One thing that this ship is doing is they're not allowing anyone to go down below deck four, and that's mainly because of customs in Canada. Canada, I guess, is really strict with customs. Ahead of time, we had to fill out some customs and immigration forms for the Canadian officials. So that way they can go over it, and that's what they're doing right now. And though we arrived maybe a half an hour ago at 4.30, it's 5 right now, we still haven't gotten clearance. So everyone's rushing around, everyone's trying to get to their excursion, everyone's trying to get off, because, well, there's not that much time in Victoria. We're here, and we leave in four hours. That's such a short amount of time. You want to get off as soon as you can, and that customs and immigration stuff makes it even more of a mess. It's just a fun day. Just hours ago, this place was filled with a bunch of people trying to get the last minute deals because actually, shopping closes before you arrive at port. Once you arrive, that is when every store closes and that means there's no more shopping because they won't reopen after we leave. So this is kind of a weird thing. Get it your shopping in done before the evening. I usually like shopping on the last night. That's not an option today, so bummer. Also, we're not gonna go down there, but there is the casino. The casino did close at 2.30 today because uh, we came into Canada's area, meaning there's no more gambling allowed. So everyone's kind of gathering, waiting to go to port down there. So we're not going to really disturb them. But casino, if you want to play the last night, not really an option because you're kind of in internet. You're not in international waters on the last day. You're actually in U.S. and Canadian territory from Victoria to Seattle. Bye. Have fun. See you next year. Might not come back. Oh, yeah, that's true. Party. We've made it to the theater and we are going to go check in for our store excursion. We're going to be doing a walking tour. Uh, we'll talk. Actually, you know what? We're going to insert right now uh, when we're back at the room later. What options you have to do in Victoria. Okay, so we just quickly wanted to talk about the excursions that you could do through the cruise line. Yes, one of the options that you could do is a city tour. Now there are a couple different ways this is offered. There are a few different bus tours and there is also a walking tour that you could do. The city tours price anywhere from $30 to $100 depending on which tour you choose and what things are included. Some of them there were like some ones where you sample different foods or where you drink different drinks those obviously cost more now the main attraction here in victoria is a little bit past the city of victoria and that's the bouchard gardens those are beautiful gardens totally worth a visit but on a night like tonight where you're only gonna have a few hours it may not be worth it we found it through the cruise line it was gonna be 135 dollars per person in which it takes 40 minutes to get out there and there's only four hours in port, so you do the math and see how long you're really going to experience it. Yeah, I will say that we did Bushard Gardens last year and when we had more time, and it was absolutely gorgeous. You can easily spend hours and hours there, and I would not wish for anyone to have to cut that short to only an hour. You definitely cannot see hardly anything in just an hour there. So keep that in mind when you're looking at those types of excursions. Yes, the other two extravagant ones that Royal Caribbean offers, I'm not sure that every cruise line offers this, is that there was whale watching, in case if you missed it in Alaska, or there was a zip lining tour, which, um, that sounds interesting. I'm not really sure if Canada is exactly known for its zip lines, but it was offered here. We elected to go with the walking tour, so let's go ahead and get back to that. All right, our group number was called, and it is time to head towards the gangway. <laughs> We'll see you later, Quantum. We'll be back on board in a few hours, hopefully. Welcome to Victoria, Canada. Oh our my first God. international country on this trip. That's so weird. We've been in America this entire time. I, you don't really think about that, but it, it is true. 
Alaska is the same country as where you leave when you leave out of Seattle. Now this was the first ever port that I had gone to in Canada. The first time I had ever been to Canada was here. And now I have been to Canada a lot of times. Wow, Quantum, still standing tall. Can't believe we were just on that ship. Now to come to Canada. I mean Canada. I mean Anne. Oh, a little windy today. A little windy, but not cold. Welcome to Canada! Yay! Yay! We made it! My name's Sarah. I'll be your tour guide. This is a walking tour. Right? We are walking from here to downtown. That's going to take two hours. Minimum. Stop, start, stop, start. Walking and talking. We're going to go ahead and enter tour mode, let the tour guide teach us a few things, and after, here we'll talk about everything you need to know for Victoria. Um, okay. We're on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. You cannot go more south than here. Therefore, those mountains, not Canada. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, we are closer to the States than we are to main the mainland. This is kind of interesting, right? To get to the States, we take a ferry from here. It takes 90 minutes. It's 18 miles away, okay? For us to get to Vancouver, we have to drive 20 miles, get on a ferry for 90 minutes, drive, get stuck in traffic, keep driving, and four or five hours later, we're in downtown Vancouver. First stop, Fisherman's Wharf. Only a 10 minute walk to here. How many of you have been to San Francisco? Fishman's Wharf there. A few. Okay, I am biased. However, this is prettier, less seagulls, doesn't smell as bad, right? No sea lions. We have some commercial fishing, pleasure boats, the restaurants, and then a bit further we have the float homes. So I'm going to be showing you those. These are residential homes, float homes, right? What do float homes not pay? Property tax, they're not on land, right? but they have to pay for the sewage, for the water, and for the electricity to be moored up, right? Tied up. So that's about 700 Canadian a month. Is that a good deal? Yeah. This is a busy waterway. This is the a gorge. This is not a river. So the ocean is coming up, right? It looks nice. However, because this is open to the Pacific, sometimes we get those black and white large mammals swimming up here chasing their dinner, which is seal, right? So the orcas can swim up here. And what happens when they do? Shut down, silencio. No planes, no boats, no traffic, no nothing. Because we need a quiet for those whales to figure out how to get back into the ocean, right? Been just walking through the tour following along learning a little bit and we went through the fisherman's wharf yes indeed <laughs> <laughs> our tour guide has taught us that one way to get from downtown to the port it's a little bit of a walk but you could do a water taxi take it from downtown near the empress walk all the way over take the taxi all the way down to the fisherman's wharf and the fisherman's wharf was maybe what maybe a five ten minute walk mm -hmm. at most so it's a really quick walk and you hop on the water taxi and take it there or back depending on how you're going and that takes you to downtown. We'll get to downtown eventually but we're just trying to find alternatives for you to get to and from locations because there seems to be a lot of different transportation options here in Victoria. <laughs> Let's enjoy some landmarks here. This is a nice view, right? I'm going to explain what we're looking at. The domed building with the green roof. That is what? What do you think? We don't say capital, we say... It's our provincial government building. So that's our legislature. Our legislature building. The big brown building with the Canadian flag behind the coho. The Empress Hotel. Quite nice. We're going to go in front of that. That was built. So, legislature built 1896, Empress Hotel built 1908. 
quite majestic looking, right? All right, so we've made it about halfway through the tour so far and it has been very informational. We have talked about real estate, we've talked about money, and we have talked about national symbols, which have all been really great topics. Victoria as a city is absolutely gorgeous. The architect within it is just so pretty and the history is super rich because it dates back to the gold rush, which is super interesting to learn about. And also our tour guide is so funny. She keeps making like these punny jokes, which are just like stupidly funny. I'd say taking a walking tour so far has been a pretty great way to spend our Victoria evening. It's seven o'clock and the sun is still quite high. So there's, even though we didn't get in until 5 p.m., there seems to be plenty of daylight to get some stuff done. provincial government building built 1896 right this city is named after the queen therefore we want a building that's majestic that's royal that looks impressive and hopefully to keep the American South as we say yeah we know what we're doing <laughs> right the domed green originally was which color what's it made out of Copper, right? Copper changes with time, oxygen, oxidized copper. That's the Empress Hotel, and this is the addition. This is a conference center. So being the provincial capital, many conferences are held here. And in the hotel, many guests come. There's lots of weddings and conventions, so it goes well together, right? I'm just going to talk briefly about the totem poles. Who saw them in Alaska? Yeah? Okay. So briefly, um, normally what type of wood or tree is it made from? Cedar, right? Cedar because the grain is fairly straight, so it's easier to carve. There are lots of cedar trees on the northwest coast, and it rots from the inside out, right? Alrighty, so we just finished up the tour here in Victoria. The walking tour ended in front of the Empress, which you could have continued on, walked with her, more of a shortcut. So it was about a 35 minute walk on the way back. Not as much talking as we did on the way here. That was a two hour tour, an hour to get over towards downtown. And now we're exploring the legislative building. We walked into the Empress for just a little bit and um, just a few things on the main road. Overall, not a bad tour. It was a lot of fun. We did learn quite a bit, I think. She was very informational. She definitely knew her stuff. And like I mentioned before, she was cracking all kinds of jokes. Every step we took was like a new joke. Yeah, I wish we would have been able to connect with her and talk with her more. Sarah was her name. If you ever do the tour and you have Sarah, you know you're in good hands. But we didn't really have that chance. There's just so many people in the group and we were so busy focused on, one, trying to learn everything she had to say and two, trying to capture all the footage so that way you have an idea of what's going on. Um, I'm not really sure how much of what we have of her is getting put in because there's so much and honestly, you might want to come here for yourself and experience it. That's one option. A bus tour might have been fun, might a lot less walking certainly, but it didn't feel as, as um, grounded. I would say a bus tour is only so much fun. You know, you're sitting in a bus, you're looking out a window, like and maybe this get is, out. This is much more personable too because I feel like you're actually talking with the tour guide rather than just hear it over the uh, the system. Yeah. So. Holy cow! Look at the line now. So we did. She did give us a few options. So we could have walked back with her if we wanted to, but we didn't want to. So we were told that we could take a taxi or that we could take a bus. There is a cruise shuttle bus. Uh, Jayla thinks that it used to be complimentary before, but for whatever well, reason now. It's not that I think it was. It was because when I was here back in September, it most definitely was complimentary, seeing as I did it. But now they are charging eight dollars Canadian one way per person. So that would be a sixteen dollar trip round trip. Uh, that would be a sixteen dollar round trip fee in Canadian. I don't know how the exchange works. It's I like think it's 14 or 13 US. 13 US. But they don't give back in US dollars. So if you give US cash, 
you're gonna get back Canadian dollars, so just be aware of that. But for those of you looking for where the bus is and where it ends and starts, it's gonna be right in front of the Empress. It's right there. There's a bit of a line, so I don't think we're gonna do it, but it is a double-decker bus, so that er there is that. Just a little crowded right now. Definitely gonna get more crowded as time goes on. It's already eight o'clock. All aboard is 9.30, so we have an hour and a half left. So even though we're not going with the tour, we are gonna walk ourselves. It is nice that they do have maps all over the place. We get a good idea of how to get around, probably. <laughs> uh, just really quickly wanted to mention, if you were coming to Victoria, you could do a tour like we did, or you could go off on your own, which I think would be totally acceptable, as long as you took transportation and you kind of have an idea of where you're going. That downtown area is kind of cool. The Empress and the Legislative Building are places that you can visit. I think you, you are supposed to be able to go in the Legislative Building, but right now, I'm not sure if you can go that late. <laughs> so according to Google Maps, it's a 20 minute walk. Our tour guide said it would be a 30, 35 minute walk and she was gonna take a shortcut. I think that's because maybe she was gonna stop a little bit. That has to be, or maybe she's just being very generous in how long it's gonna take. Yeah, I do know that looking at the map, we went around along the harbor, uh, along the water, and now we're gonna be cutting straight through. So we're not gonna get the water view, but we're gonna save a lot of time. So as we were walking back, I guess we could use this time to explain why do cruise ships even have a stop in Victoria? There's kind of really no reason, right? The main attraction is Alaska. Why would you go to Victoria? Maybe some people want to go to Canada, maybe, <laughs> but maybe not everyone. <laughs> but actually it did seem like that today. Everyone got off in yeah. a mad dash at five o'clock or 5.30 really, but that's not the reason. It's actually because of the Jones Act. If you don't know, it's a rule in which it requires a foreign flagship to touch an international destination. So we started in Seattle, we visited Alaska, which weirdly enough is not different countries. Even though it's not a part of the continuous United States, Alaska is still a part of the United States. So if we you didn't know that, um, go read a history book. <laughs> <laughs> it does have to touch a foreign port at one point throughout the cruise and Victoria just so happens to be the port. Uh, it's really one of the closest ports to Seattle. In fact, it's so close that when we leave today, we're gonna go the opposite direction of Seattle and then come back towards Seattle because they're just so close together that we just need to kill so much more time. So that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. So it's all because of a technicality that we needed to visit Victoria, Canada, in which I like Canada, but this short amount of time, I don't think is enough to really enjoy it at all. Four hours, terrible. Because if you think about it, one of those hours you have to spend getting back on board because you don't ever want to be last one on board. You want to get back at least an hour ahead just to be safe. Getting trapped in an international port is terrible. That's not a good idea. So you want to get back on time. That's why it's shoehorned in. It, like such a terrible hour, such a terrible time. Multiple cruises do it, not just Quantum of the Seas, multiple ships from different cruise lines all over the place. Some are better. They actually visit in the morning and stay throughout the afternoon. It's nice. This is not one of those. And that's probably why you're watching this video, trying to figure out what are you going to even do in Victoria and I hope we've kind of given you some idea of what and why we have to plan things the way they are. Okay, so as we're walking back, obviously we are not Canada residents. We don't really know where the heck we're going. We do happen to have service though, not because we live in Canada, but because we live in the US and our carrier does offer service in Canada and also Mexico as well. Um, we have Verizon Wireless and I believe most plans with Verizon do offer this where you can go to the foreign country, only those two countries that is, and you could have full service with talk and text and up to a certain amount of data, I think it's half a gig. I'm not sure what other carriers do, please do research ahead of time, don't automatically go to Canada and start racking up a phone bill, but I can safely say that our service, our plan allows us to go look things up in Canada and use the GPS because it honestly is quite helpful. We have made it back to civilization, or our ship is what I mean to say. Not that bad of a walk, only 20 minutes. Yeah, it really was not as bad as she made it seem. And it goes a lot faster when you're not stopping every five seconds. Though that is what we paid for on the tour. I will say that is one thing. True, very, very true. As far as the tour is concerned, it is pretty doable for youngins because there is quite a few kids of the younger variety on our tour, though they did not all walk back. Their parents decided to take transportation. They even aged back to like less than a year old. So the closer we get, the more reality checks in. Uh, this is kind of what we expected, but this is a lot worse. I did not expect this. No, I did not. Uh, we're gonna have a long line to get back on board because it is already 8.30. Even though we were gone for two and a half hours, uh, everyone's gonna be trying to get back on right now because there's only four hours total to be out. 
it's going further and further and further and further and further back all the way around the flipping gift shop why and it's not even moving unless you want to see canada don't get off the ship <laughs> this is not worth it i heard a little bit about why the line was holed up in the gift shop pardon me for the <laughs> not understanding what they said slash hearing five words and making my own story out of it someone tried to uh get on there was some kind of issue a bunch of cops came eventually they let them on now the line's moving we did see the cops <laughs> show up as we were walking we we're hearing constant sirens as we we're trying to do takes on the way back but i guess that's probably why maybe the line isn't always this bad yeah so honestly i think that someone was trying to bring something or lost their key card <laughs> or i don't know something had some kind of hold up that involved cops but now we're moving just fine so honestly yeah come to Vic come to victoria if you want don't let this line scare you because it should be non-existent there are definitely some chefs sitting up on the railing over there and they're sitting there thinking man this is why the dining room's empty. Because everyone's stuck in line here. All right, we made it through not that long. Honestly, there was just a hold up at the gate. They let us in though, we're all good. We're ready to get on through security, which is probably gonna be the longer line. It is now currently 8.40 is the update. Are we gonna make it to the dining room in time? Or did Victoria mess up our dining plans? And are we gonna go starving? <laughs> Check back soon to find out. So we're back on board. Don't click away yet because we're gonna talk about the dining situation, which I think is a completely different nightmare. But we'll get to that in a moment. We're gonna talk really quickly. Closing remarks about Victoria. Did we have fun? Did we enjoy it? Yes, we did. But I don't think we enjoyed it enough. There just was not enough time. That was such a weird visit to Victoria. I mean, we know why, we know how and whatnot, but this, so was it worth it to get off? I mean, it could be if you've never been or if you're really excited about it or if there's something specific you want to do. But is it something that's like, a, I have to go here? Maybe if it was a longer amount of time, but for just a short amount of time, maybe get off the ship and take a picture with the Welcome to Canada sign and turn around and get right back on. That's yeah. what I would have done. We don't want to discourage exploring new places because we love finding new places to go and learning new things. But this one, in this scenario, maybe not. It's a little tough. The headache to get on and off is a mess because it is a long line to get off. And of course, with a short amount of time, it does not give a lot of time for people to return. So there's a long line to get back on board. Though we got back on board within about 20 minutes, it's still... It could have been worse. It if still we could were be the worse. people who were actually stuck in the, the wait, when everything was held up, that would have been, that would suck because we would be standing there for who even knows how long. And I want to really give a big shout out to security and everyone working here on board, trying to really rush the uh, process to get through everyone. They actually went so quick once we got inside, they were going. They had That's the four lines I've open ever. and we were in the front. They have a second gangway open in the back, which I'm sure has even more or just as much. So really efficient, really quick. I'm really, really impressed with how well Royal Caribbean did. And I think they know that because of how short time is that they need to be quick. When we got back on board, we had some maitre d's actually letting us know that dinner is still open, the main dining room is still open, the windjammer is still open. And, and uh, the Solarium Bistro is never, still open. We've never been to the Solarium Bistro, but we're still not going, unfortunately. It's a free included place, but they've been trying to push everyone to the Solarium Bistro all cruise long. Yeah, it seems not to be very popular. So It's supposed to be a buffet style thing, but that's for another time. Yeah, maybe if we come back on another similar ship, we'll go there. But for now, it's dinner time. Welcome back to American Icon for the final night. I have to tell you a very important information. <laughs> what is it? What is it? That's the information. <laughs> you know, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If I may have your attention, please. On behalf of our food and beverage director, our award winning executive chef. <laughs> we have made it back to the cabin from dinner. We decided to not vlog it fully because I think more people are interested about what we have to say about what's going on board than what's going on is our opinions on the last menu for the day. 
One thing, uh, we have already left. It is pitch black, not because the screen's broken today, but because it's actually just dark outside. It's kind of weird. Also, it's not late enough to be dark out yet because we are so got so used to Alaska where it's literally bright until 11 o'clock. That was kind of trippy when at dinner it was starting to get dark and we were like, what? So typically we have dinner at 7.30, but because we have my time, we were able to select a different time for tonight's dinner and that was useful since we got back so late, we would not have made 7.30. Uh, in fact, we wouldn't have made anywhere from 5 all the way until 9, so we had 9 o'clock, which is the latest possible time, but we did see people getting accepted at 9.30. Which was nice to know because, I mean, you saw the lines that we were stuck in outside. It was insane. People were getting on much later than they expected to, so I was really considerate of dining to allow them to come in and still be able to eat and not be like, No! You get no food! Yeah, they were... <laughs> A very accommodating I, I know for us it's like the worst thing in the world the biggest nightmare for one day but for the crew they see this every single week week in and week out and they kind of are getting used to it and understanding that it's not gonna go the way everyone's planned people are gonna be late especially because of tours doesn't matter what you do you're gonna be cutting it a lot closer than you would on a day that's a lot longer one thing that they made an adjustment for is the buffet was open later so instead of their usual time of 5 to 9 it was actually open from 6 to 10 so that was very helpful even though we didn't go up to the buffet was a surprise for us because we were planning on eating beforehand but yeah. it is what it is and they know that they can't send 4900 people to the pizza place because all the dining options are closed yeah that'd be a complete <laughs> nightmare oh my god could you imagine uh, i'm just envisioning it no. thankfully we actually were smart and we packed ahead of time so it's just finishing up packing yes. now here's the other thing packing you're supposed to get your luggage out by 10 o'clock the night ahead <laughs> We didn't even get back on the ship until almost 9 o'clock. Yeah. So how the heck are we supposed to be able to finish packing by 10? Let me take a step back. The way luggage works on board is there's two options. One, you could self-assist your luggage out, meaning you take your luggage out on your own. Or two, you do the traditional style of luggage in which you put your luggage out the night before and you will reunite with it back in the terminal the next day. So that way you don't have to deal with it during breakfast and disembarkation and it's just a pain because you're trying to get through the ship with all your luggage and up and down the stairs with all your luggage. Yeah, they will give you a luggage tag with a number. They've given that to us already. We have a airport transfer through our Caribbean, so we'll be taking their bus. That's why we have an earlier number. We got two. So that's all going to be taken care of and hopefully things will go smooth tomorrow morning. We'll end this video tomorrow morning once we're off and on our way to the airport and home. I'm not ready to go home yet. So those are your two options for luggage. Now you're supposed to put your luggage out by 10 o'clock like I said, but because of the late day, they really are going to understand, they know. So if you're later if by an hour, maybe two hours. It's already almost 11 and the, the hallway still lined with luggage. Like they haven't even started to take it. Yeah, so they're going to, they, they know that people are going to be late on a day like today. It's just so weird. One cruise, on every cruise, there are always going to be people who put out their luggage later than 10. But this tonight is gonna be even worse and it's so nice to know that they just, they're ready for it, they're, they're understanding. So we'll get the luggage out as soon as we can, we're gonna finish up packing, but make sure if you're doing this, pack before you land in Victoria. Usually people leave it till after dinner or like the last hours before the luggage is due. This one's a little bit different, you're not gonna be able to do that, you have to get packing earlier. Which we actually did do, you guys should be proud of us. Normally we wait until after dinner, today, we actually took the time during the day to pack. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty proud of us. All right, only an hour later and we have all our luggage ready to go. Everything's tagged, group number two. We'll see you tomorrow. And we'll also see you tomorrow morning. Say goodbye, Jalen. Bye, I'm sleeping out here tonight. It's the next morning and now it is time to get off the ship. Our luggage tag number has been called, so that means we are gonna go get off and meet our luggage back in the terminal. Goodbye interior virtual cabin. We'll maybe see you next time. The chaos of getting off. Sad. So immediately we got out got our luggage and everything was really quick not that bad good job Seattle we, yeah uh, I was 
utterly impressed. We have been thrown into the line for the shuttle. I'm sorry. We have been thrown in line for the airport transfer, so we're on our way. And I guess we'll be in the airport real soon. It seems that they have a lot of buses, so you shouldn't have an issue if you get off a little late, maybe. made it back to Los Angeles home safe and sound. I can't believe that this trip has already come to an end. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you stuck with us through the whole series, thank you so much for your support. Hopefully you'll join us for the next one. As always, this isn't a good mind, but just I'll see, see you, you real soon. soon. That was way better.